Thank you for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. Today it's all about the red, white, and blue. That's right, it's the 4th of July, and there's a lot going on right here at this city event. Of course, it's sponsored by the city of Rancho Palos Verde, so let's go check it out. It would not be the 4th of July without the very uh, patriotic hat that you wear every year. Where did you get that hat? I bought it here at the fair some 25 years ago, and I've worn it at every uh, 4th of July since then. Uh, it got a bit disheveled, so I put a plastic frame in it to hold it up so that it looks halfway decent. It looks as good as ever. Now, Ken, tell us why it's important for the city to host an event like this today. Mostly because it's a reminder of what started all of it. And we all have learned in school about the Declaration of Independence. And usually they teach just the first paragraph and don't go on to the rest of it. But the Declaration of Independence was a rather lengthy document. It said more than we the people want to form a union, you know, kind of thing. It actually listed 27 grievances against the King of England that the people felt were impositions on their ability to be good citizens. Tell us, first of all, why it's so important for the city every year to host this amazing event that everybody always comes to. I think it's an amazing way for the community to get together, for families to get together. It's really geared toward families and to celebrate not only what this country's all about, but what this city's all about, which is being together, being one group, one people for a common purpose. You know, we're always so supportive of, of businesses coming into the peninsula and supporting that, but we have to also support, like you said, community and family too. Yeah, it's really what this community, this city was founded on, was families being able to uh, have a great place to live and grow up and be together and so this event just continues that tradition. It, it, talk about why this event is so important for the city to host every year because the community really does come together here. I think it's important that communities have their own special events. It doesn't have to be every one uh, but if you have your own Memorial Day, if your own community has its own July 4th like we do, then it gives neighbors and neighborhoods an opportunity to come together, see each other, and continue to build that sense of community. And so that's why I think it's important. Fourth of July's always been a big day for us here in Rancho Palos Verdes. I mean, I'm looking at one of the original city founders from 44 years ago, Ken Dida. He's on the city council again, 44 years later. I mean, he's a fixture around here. That sort, that sort of connection with our history, with our culture is critically important, particularly in days like today when technology and, and, and cell phones and things like this seem to disconnect us. So that's why I love coming here. We've been doing it for years. I got my 12 year old son, you know, Ian and our, our three legged dog uh, enjoying it as well. And incidentally, my mom lives here now. She's 90 years old. She just moved here from Colorado. She's staying up Belmont Village, which is only a few blocks from, from our house. So this really is a special 4th of July for us. I mean, for us personally, it's, it's an opportunity I never thought we were going to be able to have where we're all together as a family. Again, my sister's up visiting. She flew here from thousands of miles away. She's staying with us for a couple of weeks. I mean, it's, it's a terrific it's a terrific weekend for us. So it's, it's all about family this weekend? For us, yeah, and, and I think so for most of the rest of our community. We are now joined by Councilwoman Susan Brooks, Rocky and Rolo. Happy 4th, Susan. Happy birthday, America. Happy 240. One birthday years. Yay! <laughs> Susan, this is such a special event that the city hosts every year. Why is it important to remember to do this? Uh, it brings the people together, reminds us why it is we are here, we're a free nation. I think just all the flags all over the place lets the children know at a very young age that there's something very special going on in this place every year. 
and it brings people together from the whole community and a little bit outside the community because we have such a long-standing high reputation of having such a successful event for the whole family. It's so nice because friends run into friends, family can bring family and it's just a day just to remember that. And the food is awesome and the crafts are great and all of our wonderful city committees are here in full force our wonderful Ladies RPV gentlemen, TV people, the and the Palace Verde Symphonic Band, yes! Well, I think the most important thing is community. It brings the community together, and uh, nothing is better to see all the residents from the peninsula and from other cities to come up here, but see our residents in Rancho Palos Verdes here, mingling among friends and uh, enjoying each other's company on the 4th of July. Yeah, it's fun because, you know, we see different events for business and so forth and everybody bands together, but everybody takes the day and comes here as well. It's a tradition. It is a tradition and uh, I, I love it. I just, the weather always cooperates. It's not too hot, a uh, little breeze, but, but the sea, the sun's coming out now, so it'll probably get warmer later, but it's just a, uh, a great day for uh, celebrating our nation's birth. This is a huge event that so many residents come to, they look forward to it every year. With well the day and all the other things that you guys have going, how long does it take you to put this one together? Well, both of those events were, it's a year long event. Um, we've got uh, two, well, probably about one and a half staff that are just working on this continuously, whether it's this or whale of a day. And again, it's a year long series of events that uh, as you obviously get closer, you get more and more ramped up with our vendors, with our contractors, with uh, anything and everything that you could think of. Um, and Usually, I mean, they've been doing it so long here that uh, it comes off pretty flawlessly. There's a lot of behind the st scenes stuff, but uh, we're able to take care of those things promptly and quickly, and uh, nobody knows uh, anything the worse. You guys have an amazing job because, you know, food is very important on days like this, and everybody wants their hot dogs and hamburgers, right? Oh, absolutely. I even saw an organic hot dog there today, so I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to have to check that out, but there's plenty of food over there. I was staring at the menu earlier, and uh, I was pretty impressed. Impressive because you know Fourth of July is all about fun, fireworks, and food, right? Absolutely, it's it's just getting together, uh, having a good time. Got the band playing, just seeing some old friends, seeing some new friends. So it's it's a good time. Well, we are now joined by Captain Dan Berenger, and it's Fourth of July. What is the most fun part of Fourth of July for you? Oh, I love just getting together with family and barbecuing and enjoying the fireworks. You know, we were talking about the, the fact that the city hosts this event every year, and we see so many families that come out, and people really do enjoy being together. Absolutely. It's a great family day and a great family event here that RPV puts on. Mona Dill, you know what it takes to get this event together every year. Tell our audience. So there's a lot of things going on. We're doing everything from making ribbons and bows and organizing boots and contacting people and trying to solicit funds to offset the cost. So it's a little bit of everything. Okay, so now we know food is mega important on the 4th of July. What kind of vendors come in here every year? So we have lots of food vendors here. We have lots of barbecue. There's some great fish tacos over there. Of course, my personal favorite, the crispy sweet corn, is always here every year. Of course, and the kettle corn, which is my favorite. Hey, excellent. That's my number one favorite. And then also people can do a little shopping when they're here. Tell us about that. So for me, there seems to be a little bit of everything. I've already bought one scarf, one hat. There seems to be a lot a lot of choices here today. And it's also nice that we have some city booths so people can go in there and, and meet some of the city people. And not only city booths, we certainly have someone from Public Works and Recreation and Parks, and they have our Emergency Operations Center, but we have like 16 different community organizations that are here, Los Serenos Docents, and we have a lot of groups that are here as well as our sponsors. So we're here with Gina Dehovic and Maddie. Now tell us about your booth today and about uh, voting for you for Mary Star Queen. Um, our booth here today is for Mary Star Fiesta Queen, and that's Mary Star Parish's biggest fundraiser. And us as the girls raise the most money for the parish this year. Okay, now I know that you've been doing this and working very hard for a while. Um, just talk about the different people you get to meet in the community. A lot of different people, like Councilman Mizetich and Susan Brooks have donated some money for tickets and as well as my parents and my friends and family. <laughs> Happy 4th of July!
Right, so Robert, we know that Green Hills is one of the sponsors for this wonderful event. Can you tell us um, why it was important for Green Hills to sponsor this? You know, we're part of the, our outreach in the community here. It's really important to be able to um, give opportunities for families to be able to be here and, and have some um, opportunity to just plan ahead a little bit. So what I'm here for is just to give people some options to look around and, and see what we have available. And um, it's it's amazing how many people come over and say, oh, we have our spot over here at Green Hills and we love your event. So it's really amazing to be a part of the community. So it's just an extension of what we do. We have different um, opportunities here and in the surrounding area. So to be a sponsor here at this event is just, you know, something we do every year. And it's, you know, really full of community because everybody comes out. So it gives you a chance to kind of chat informally. Oh, definitely. And some people, they, they give me that look oh no not not green hills you know but but uh, as far as you know thinking about their cemetery plans you're just planning ahead and that's what we're about is just people um, just thinking ahead for families and then at the time they need it it's a sensitive time so it's really amazing how people um, come to some of our events and then in verse we're able to come out here to their events and you know be able to just be uh, visible and be uh, uh, accessible to the community so it's fourth of july what's your favorite part of fourth of july robert well, obviously the fireworks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so tonight it'll be an amazing night. Uh, my kids are going to be coming out here soon, and we'll be spending some time, four kids and, and the wife and uh, extended family were born and raised here in the area, youngest of seven. So a lot of community, a lot of family get-togethers, and, and the, you know, uh, as far as community events, this is going to be an amazing night. Tell us why it's important for you guys to sponsor this event today. Well, we are uh, very involved with the communities that we service, and we are very proud and appreciative to be able to service the residents of Rancho Palos Verdes. And how much fun is it to see all of the residents out, out here enjoying the 4th of July? Well, it is great. It's a great environment, and it is uh, really nice to see everybody enjoying the day and celebrating. And from year to year, I think this event just gets bigger, doesn't it? It just gets bigger and better. I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody's favorite uh, uh, vendor, and that's the fire grazers. So who loves the goats? Everybody love the goats? <laughs> Yay! Well, the fire grazers are who the goats work for, and, uh, and they're always happy, they're always welcoming visitors, and if they're still out there, Doug, are they still out there? The goats still at it? Yeah, we had a lot of rain this winter, so the goats are pretty happy these days. They're, we're keeping them very busy. So they were up off of McBride Trail last time I heard, but that was about a week or so ago. So thanks for all these great folks that uh, that make this uh, make this happen. Now, the 4th of July would not be complete without a pie-eating contest. So what kind of pie would you eat to become a winner? I think I would win with a lemon meringue pie. There we go. Is that your favorite? No, but it's the one that I can down the quickest. The meringue goes quick, and the filling, you just, you know, I... I was on a, this is a little side note, I was on a, a, a ride on a stern wheeler up to Mississippi and they had a contest, it was the Mike Fink contest and it was who could drink three glasses of beer the fastest. Well, fortunately I belong to a fraternity and I got good training, okay? Because they lined up the three glasses and then the prize was a Mississippi gambler's hat and a pewter tankard. Okay, I wanted both of them. Well, while the other people were sitting there drinking like this, I did what we did in this fraternity. Throw your head back, open your gullet, and pour it down. I was done before they had their first glass finished, and the, the guy who was directing it says, stop, we got a winner. <laughs> You know, pie is too good to be rushed through. My, my grandfather told me when he was growing, when I was growing up, I asked him because we both love pie. I said, Grandpa, what's your favorite kind of pie? And he said, whole pie. So anyway, pie's too good to be rushed through, so I won't enter that, but I may eat my share. Okay, now you're leading me into my next question. If you were to enter a pie eating contest, what kind of pie would you win with? Oh my goodness, uh, holy cow. I love key lime pie, uh, apple pie, blueberry pie. Oh my gosh. There's I think you're going back to whole pie. Yeah, whole pie, that's a good one. Cream pie or banana cream pie, because my mom used to make the best pie. A rhubarb pie, there's no doubt. 
I love rhubarb pie. I know a lot of people think it's crazy, but... Well, my favorite pie is a cherry pie, so I'd have to say cherry pie. Cherry pie. Yeah, Let's yeah. Do it. Yeah. Pumpkin. <laughs> it'd have to be pumpkin. That reminds me of home. That reminds me of mom, so it'd be pumpkin. Apple, my favorite. Green apple, red apple? Green apple. Well, so my favorite, of course, is anything to do with chocolate, but I have to say I was forced by a whole lot of hoopla by to enter one year, and I, I failed miserably, sad to say. So. Was it a chocolate pie? It was indeed. <laughs> and that will do it for this year's 4th of July celebration. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on our next show around the peninsula.